Good day, children. Today, we're going to have a lesson that will surely interest you and will help you in your everyday lives. And the title of our lesson for today is Estimating and Measuring Length, Mass, and Capacity of Objects Using Non-Standard Units of Measurements. So before we start, let's have our trivia time. And this activity will help us improve our linguistic intelligences. Did you know that the ancient Egyptians used their body parts to measure the lengths of different objects? Like a cubit, it's the length from your elbow to the tips of your fingers. A palm is the width of your hand. And a digit is the width of your finger. Egyptians' way of measuring length is quite amusing, right? Are you ready to try it too? But before we start trying, let us first define what is length. It is the distance from one end to the other end of an object. Now let's use our palms to measure how long is our table, but we may use our palms to measure it later after we have our discussion. Now, using our palms is what we call a non-standard unit to measure length. The palm that we use to measure is an example of a non-standard unit of measure for length. There are other examples of non-standard ways to measure length, like paper clips. The chocolate bar is four paper clips long, just like what you see in the picture. Another is your eraser. The notebook is four erasers long. Another tool that we can use to measure length is called a ruler. It is used to measure lengths of objects. And did you know that the marks of or interval on a ruler are called hash marks? So the lines that we see on the ruler are actually called hash marks, which are used to measure the length. Another tool that we can use is tape measure. It is used to measure lengths of longer or taller objects like cabinet, wall, height of a building, or a tree. So, let's have some examples. Now, we are going to find out the length of, this op of each object. Each bar in the graph is equivalent to one unit. So, as you can see here, there are bars. And each bar is equivalent to a unit. First is a carton of milk. How many units? Very good. Six units long. Next is the rubbing alcohol. How many units long? Very good. Five units. And now let's go to mass. Let's study the picture below. Who is heavier and who is lighter between the two, the two children? Let's see. Good thinking. Who is heavier? Odette is heavier than Lila. Who is lighter? Lila is lighter than Odette. How did we know? Yes. By just looking at where the seesaw is directed to. Like here, the seesaw is downwards towards Odette. Meaning, she is heavier than Lila because the seesaw is lifted on Odette's part. Next, what can you say about the students playing in the seesaw? Ben and Anna. You're right. None of them went out or none of them went up or went down. Ben is as heavy as Anna and Anna is as heavy as Ben. So both of them just have the same weight or mass. How did you know? By just looking again at the seesaw because the seesaw didn't move and stayed on the same direction of the two children. So, because of that, we were able to find out their mass. 
So what is mass? This is the weight of an object. It tells how it tells how heavy or how light an object is. So let's look at the picture. How many watermelons do we need to measure Ben's mass? Let's count. One, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Let's see. Impressive. Ben is as heavy as six watermelons. Let's have some examples. The box of crayon is as heavy as blank blocks. So children, as you can see, we use blocks to measure the mass of the crayons. And the answer is, the box of crayon is as heavy as six blocks. Very good. Next, the bag is as heavy as blank oranges. How many oranges do we need to measure the mass of the bag? Let's see. The bag is as heavy as eight oranges. Good job. Now we go to capacity. How many glasses of water should we drink every day? Remember kids to drink your water to keep yourselves healthy. Just like Karina. She wants to know how many glasses of water does her water jug contain. So she wants to know the capacity of her water jug. So what is capacity? This is the amount of liquid a container can hold. So in Karina's case, how many glasses of water are there in Karina's water jug? So let's count the glasses. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's see. Good job! The water jug has eight glasses of water. Let's have some examples for capacity. The ball has blank cups of water. Let's count the cups. One, two, three, four. Let's see. Very good. The ball has four cups of water. Good job. Next, a gallon has blank bottles of water. Let's count the bottles. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's see. Very good. A gallon has eight bottles of water. Good job. Now, children, we were already able to know that there are ways that we can use to estimate and measure the length, capacity, and mass of things by using everyday objects that we see or the non-standard units of measuring them. And now to practice more, let's go back to our genuine.